So they'd like to continue that up Bricks Acid Bundles, but uh, the third one that I'm doing, and this video will be focused on uh, adding CICD to my project, the one that I've done on the previous video that I'm gonna put a card here, you can watch. So the first one I did more just to show you how that works, how to authenticate with Azure Data Bricks CLI. And today I'm gonna create a service principle that's gonna control my workspace and then they'll be able to also deploy um, dApps. So let's get started. The first step is to create a Azure Active Directory or Entra ID identity what we call like an application or you can call it a service principle so i'm going to create a service principle that's going to be with limited scope over the workspace that i'm going to deploy my data bricks asset bundle and after that i'm just gonna associate in data bricks management console the service principle to that workspace and grant some rights and then i will generate a token and with that, I can create my CI CD in GitHub and automate all the process. So let's do the first step, which is create a Azure service principle, Azure entry identity. So the first one is to get my resource group in a variable. Okay, I need to give a name. And the name of the resource group is, uh, let me open my Azure and it's that workspace and the resource group is this one and just reply here on my that's this one and then now I copy the other command that I'm gonna describe to you so this is uh, using Azure CLI. So I'm doing a iz add service principle create for RBAC. I give it a name. Uh, the name that I'm going to give is to do, I'll call it uh, CICD demo. And the role is going to be contributor and the scope is going to be that um, resource group, which my workspace is located. Let's do it. So that's going to uh, return uh, those codes and ID. Just copy that to a safe place. So the next step, data bricks, launch the workspace. And that's very important that to follow my tutorial, you need to be a Azure administrator. Otherwise, it would not have access to the Darbricks account console. So access, you click here on your workspace and then click management accounts. If you are not an admin, that will not appear. And then you have to go to user management and then service principle, add service principle. You put Microsoft Enter ID managed and then that ID here is this ID here. And the name could be any name, but let's give the same name that we gave here. Let me see if I copy everything. So it starts with 33B, finishes with 686, 686, 33B, okay. So that's correct, add, good. Now, um, you click here again, and let's generate a OAuth secret because we are doing going to do a machine to machine authentication to generate the, the personal access token. So let's click generate secret, copy this secret here. And again, put in a safe place and also copy the client ID, which is, which is the same, but let's copy here. Already copied, it's the same. This one here, cool. Um, now go to workspaces, pick the workspace that we are going to do. The one that's the only one we have in this account, 
and then go to permissions click add permissions service principle you're gonna choose the dab CICD demo can you see that's the yeah, put as a admin save now on your open the um, databricks configuration profile on your computer which is located on the your home directory and the file called databricks cfg so and then create a profile with three variables host is going to be your workspace uh, URL which you can find here this one then the ID is the uh, client ID that we saved on a safe place which is called the app ID or once you create the service principle let's put it here and the secret is the secret of the OAuth that we just generated. With that, I can authenticate it with my Azure CLI. So to see if we are, we are authenticated, let's do some commands here to, con to confirm. So this command here, which is Databricks auth profiles, check if the profiles are configured correctly. So it is configured correctly, the DAB SP. Now, let's see if the environment variables for that profile is correct. Yeah. So I need to put the dash dash profile. And then that's saying that's a OAuth machine to machine authentication. So another thing that we can do is let's validate the bundle because when it validates, we'll tell which user it's uh, connected. So let's go and copy this, just to be a little bit faster. Yeah, it's validating. Can you see that it's validating to this user, which means this, this user is uh, authenticated. So let's generate a, what I call personal access token for that user, which is the service principle. And then the command is data bricks and tokens then create then comment so the comment that i'm going to give is just call it dab uh, ci cd and the profile that i'm using is uh, dab sp and then i think that's it and then I'm not going to give an expiration date. Uh, let's say, usually when you do a service prints, we don't want to, this to expire. And then once you do that, it creates a token. So copy that and again, put it in a safe place. The token is this value here. So we are almost there. So we need two more steps. So the next step is go, you have to have a uh, Databricks, not Databricks, uh, GitHub repository i already have one i think on the on the previous um tutorial we created one so i'm here on my repository you have to go in settings and then go to secrets and variables actions and create a new secret i already have one but because I've, I've used that in different runs, but with a different service principle token. I'm just going to update that. But this token secret should be called SP token. So I'm just going to put that value that I just saved. So I'll start with DAP always. Yeah saved so now I can create a folder called github and then inside github I create another folder called 
workflows with this. Inside there, I can create a file called deploy prod dot yaml and then in this file I'm just gonna copy and paste I'm creating this pipeline called prod deployment concurrence is one make sure that doesn't have concurrence and then that's gonna be triggered on push to master I'm on the master branch here just for the purpose I'm not teaching here a good strategy here so the first job is going to do on Ubuntu it's gonna check out install Python install the package and test after that it's gonna push to bundle and it's gonna use that secret token here and that's gonna deploy to prod so we need to also come here that are bricks and create a new target which is prod you can just do after the dev one that we did on the other video make sure everything is aligned and the workspace ID is the same that's gonna deploy to the work um, to the folder path of the current user which is the service principle and then you have to have a run as because we're gonna deploy jobs and on prod it's a requirement on dev you don't have to have it you usually put on the name of the person deploying or the person authenticated in our case is that same code which you can find here and that I think we are ready, ready to deploy I hope that everything works uh, the file looks fine and this one as well let's see if it works so let's commit to git go to actions it started first it's gonna test install the packages and set up the Python environment test complete so pass and now it's gonna deploy the bundle it's gonna first authenticate it's authenticated now it's deploying the bundle on that user here it's all green let's check if it deployed so workflow was deployed on that CICD demo and um, also the workspace I have users this is the one we start with three I've done other examples before and the Python package is here. Artifacts, the will is deployed here. So it's all good. I'm not going to do the run for the job because it's going to take a while to start the cluster, but you can change your bundle uh, and then do a, a run, like a bundle run of the job to see if that triggers correctly. Uh, and that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful. I'm going to put the, in the description of the video the GitHub um, repository with the README. You can go step by step from all the steps from the previous video to the steps for this video. All right. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, like the video, and thanks for watching. See you next time.